Very good morning to all, to my dear friends, my colleagues, and my patients, and the other audience who are interested in knowing more about infertility. Today, the topic which we have decided to discuss and give you more information is about general infertility. Maybe if we get time, we will also talk uh, about the male infertility in particular. I would also like to mention a few things why India is becoming a hub and becoming a center of excellence for taking infertility treatment compared to other European countries, to compare to Australia and also US. This in the end I will uh, give you the necessary information. Now let us talk what is actually infertility, how do we define infertility. Infertility is defined as inability to conceive after one year of unprotected intercourse uh, provided she has not used any means for the family planning and contraception. What are the basically the population based study prevalence? It is approximately 10 to 15 percent of our population are suffering from infertility. This is also, it is matching with the global in incidence which is happening in other uh, countries. And this is a basically ICMR based study which was done about maybe one and a half decades ago and I was one of the uh, principal investigators in that study. In this 10 to 15 percent, different from a state to a state. Like a state like Bihar got more incidence. States which are a little bit more better socially affluent and more uh, uh, less self poverty, so incidents are less. So it is a lot depends on the other factors, the social uh, economical factor, the background, the nutrition, the, basically the diet, the poverty also affect a lot because then it, other things like PID will become more if patient and the public are having basically more uh, type of incidence of uh, poverty and socio-economically they are weak. What about the compared to male and female, what is the incidence and prevalence? You remember always one third it is related to the problem in women, one third related to the problem in men, and one third is a combined problem. Approximately 10 to 20 percent it is unexplained. Semen analysis normal, tube in the wife is normal, hormones normal, ovulation is good, but still things doesn't happen. This is called unexplained infertility. For that, there are, you know, where literature shows that five to six cycle of I am in a stimulated IUI it's good and beneficial and if success doesn't happen so better to take early treatment and early IVF it gives a good result. Of course uh, about the symptoms which is good to know for all of you in patients with infertility in wife she may also have some kind of an irregular period, pain abdomen. So these are the type of signs and symptoms which we have to immediately take it into the consideration and report to the infertility specialist. In men, again, we have to take the history in particular with the relation whether he has got any sexual impotence, whether they have regular relationship, whether he is having a basically other bad habit like a smoking, alcohol, substance of the drug abuse. And also it is important to know whether he is working in a place where he is exposed more to pesticide, lead uh, exposed, uh, these are the kind of things and factors where it can cause and predispose men to the infertility and oligospermia. Whether we also should ask him he is taking any tablets, any drug like cimetidine or alkali alkylating agents or whether he is taking any antihypertensive agent, beta blocker, these are all can also cause infertility and sexual impotence. Normally the wife 
the woman <coughs> patient, lady patient will be examined by us, by myself, and for examination of the, her husband, the urologist will be examining the husband. What about the first thing which investigation to be done is a semen analysis. Semen analysis is a must. It's also recommendation from the ICMR, from WHO, and also from the ASRM. Semen analysis, it is a must to be done. And the instruction will be given, three to five days abstinence to be given, and once under aseptic precaution, <coughs> he has to bring the sample in a sterile container. The volume will be about 3 to 5 ml, alkaline pH, and the <coughs> concentration should be minimum 15 million per ml, with the, having a total active uh, fa forward progressive motility and slow progressive motility should be at least 32 to 40 percent, and morphology only 4 percent, that is enough. There should not be any agglutination, there should not be any postal, more, less than one postal per high power field that is enough is allowed, and no agglutination. Once this criteria is there and they have got enough relationship together, then it will rule out the problem in husband. But if he has got a type of oligospermia, if concentration is less than 15 million, and if he has got a less motility, then we have to check certain things. We have to check his thyroid, we have to check his prolactin, we have to also examine him. Uh, and then it will be necessary to refer him to a urologist, and there they will do also the ultrasound and the Doppler of the scrotum. Where, whether he has got any varicosity or whether he has got any hydrocyl. All those things has to be done and the full workup by the urologist will be done. As far as the wife is concerned, the wife, the primary test which is being done is the thyroid profile has to be done, the TSH in this age group of the woman between uh, basically 18 to 36 years age the TSH uh, should not cross more than 2.9. That is in the reproductive age group, especially in the during pregnancy. Then prolactin also has to be checked. Her FSH, LH to be done on the early follicular phase. Her AMH has to be done. Once the hormones okay, semen analysis okay, the next step comes by the tubal assessment. The tubal assessment, it will be done by the three uh, type of a procedure. The first one is a HSG, hysterosalpingography, which is basically a conventional type of X-ray. It is a fluoroscopic guidance. The iodine uh, dye, they will be pushed from the cervix by a calmula, and it will be as an outpatient procedure. It's a little bit painful. Um, and we do in a younger age group, once everything is normal, still she is not getting concept, we have to do HSG. But there are times where uh, we do uh, basically Simon uh, test, Sion test, where is an ultrasound guidance of the tubal assessment uh, by a Foley's uh, catheter into the cervical canal. We are pushing the basically a saline along with the antibiotic. This is another way and by the ultrasound guidance we can see the, uh, whether there are any fluid coming to the pelvis or not. A little bit this is a blind procedure. The final thing is the best, and the best one would be then by laparoscopy. Suppose she is in an older age group, more than 30 years, more than uh, basically five years, she is married and still no conception, HHG already done, HHG is showing that the tubes are okay or tubes are blocked, depends on that. Then it is a must to do the laparoscopy, it will be a procedure and then the anesthesia, general anesthesia. and. Uh, the tubal potency will be proved, then other aspects like a presence of the diagnosis of the endometriosis will be also uh, performed and confirmation of the, as you are, you know, basically in the previous uh, uh, interview I mentioned that laparoscopy is a gold standard for diagnosing endometriosis. So laparoscopy when we do for assessing the tubal potency, it is also necessary uh, to look at 
all through all the pelvis for the endometrial implant and the bluish discoloration or any scarring to show whether endometriosis is there or to see whether any subclinical PID, pelvic inflammatory disease is there, to see any tubercles are there, to see the tubo-ovarian relationship. Sometimes, many times are there that the ovaries are being positioned anteriorly, where the ovulation happens and the egg doesn't have access to, to the tube. The position once it is being changed, this is also, it causes another problem with the infertility. I had a patient where she had undergone in one of the very good centers in Hyderabad laparoscopy about few years ago, six, seven years before, and when she came to me, I treated her nearly for one year, but I did not get success. So finally, she was herself asking me that if I can repeat the laparoscopy, and I did the laparoscopy, and in that laparoscopy, everything was normal. The only thing over here, put the ovaries were positioned anteriorly and I repositioned to the ovarian fossa and in two months she got conceived. So imagine the role of laparoscopy is very, very, very important in doing a workup for a patient which is infertile. Especially if patient is going for an ART, for other factors, for tubal factor, it is always nice to do the laparoscopy because then we get more information, we will know the root of the problem. And at some point, Many cases are there where we do laparoscopy. She may not need to go for the further treatment or IVF. She'll get conceived. This is the great advantage of the laparoscopy. With regards to the treatment, once we have a full workup of the patient's semen analysis, hormones, follicular study, tubal assessment by laparoscopy or by HSG, then we can plan out the treatment because then with all this investigation, we will have the diagnosis. Based on the, 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 the diagnosis, if it is basically a male factor, oligospermia or oligoastonospermia, then best thing is to go for a intra uh, uterine insemination of the husband semen. Or if suppose there are problem is with the azoospermia, then it is a must to do the testicular biopsy. It will be done by a urologist and ICC will be done. Briefly, I am just mentioning. Or if there are problem with the tubal factor and even laparoscopy is confirmed that yes, by conf confirmation tubal block is there, it is not possible by FTC or any other the procedure to open the tube. So the ultimate treatment lies in the infertility. For a patient with a PCO with the irregular period, we have modalities of the molecule ovulation induction agents are there, latrose, letova or clomiphene citrate. We give and then follicular study will be done and in about five to six cycle there is a good chance that she will get conceived. Of course, every time the clomiphene citrate what the 10 to 15 percent per cycle chance is there. So about cumulative success rate, about to five to six cumulative success rate, it is only about 30 to 40 percent. Because this clomiphene has got also not only the estrogenic agonistic property, but also it has got antagonist property. So endometrium, it is always very poor when we are giving them a, uh, basically clomiphene. So if this PCO patient, they really don't respond and then to the clomiphene. So we have to review the case. If they are clomiphene resistant case, then we have to give them a counseling plan for a ART and IVF. If she is responding to clomiphene and ovulation is there, but still no success, then it is better to plan for a few cycle of the IUI. This is just a brief and very uh, uh, basically a total summary of what plan we have to make for a patient who's got infertility. The details in every time we have in uh, with respect to the topic, I will uh, give you the necessary information. I think that is all enough for today. Anything else, any question you have, you can just call us and let us know. And thank you very much.